Hello everybody, I'm Archbishop Christopher Prowse, the Catholic Archbishop of the Canberra and Goulburn Archdiocese in Australia, but I'm also one of the international patrons of the Jesus Youth and I'm so happy to share with you uh, this uh, COVID conference that we're doing, perhaps uh, online in a more hybrid way around the world, the 35 countries where Jesus Youth is uh, making a missionary difference. On this, the choral anniversary, 35 years since the beginning of the genius of and the grace and the providence of Jesus Youth internationally. Uh, I've been asked to speak a little bit about the lay missionary in the church. I'd like to begin, therefore, by quoting something from the scriptures that really set the scene. That's from uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse uh, 9. You are a chosen race, a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, a people to be a personal possession to sing the praises of God who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Out of darkness into his wonderful life. A kingdom of priests, a chosen race, holy nation. Now, you might sort of say, well, where does all that start? Everybody, it starts at our baptism. Our baptism and confirmation mandate us to be missionary disciples, whether we're priests, whether we're bishops, whether we're lay people, whether we're male or female, if you're baptised, you are part of God's chosen race. And we share in the death and resurrection of Jesus uh, through our ministry. When we were ordained, a, a, uh, sorry, when we were baptised a Catholic, the priest would have put some chrism on your head. And when he was putting the chrism on your head immediately after the water baptism you received, he said the following. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet and king, so may you share, so may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet and king, so may you too live that life. So a lay missionary uh, lives that out in a particular way. The, the church, but let me go back to that point. The church, by its very nature, by, by being baptised, is missionary. You don't have to be sort of a member of Jesus' youth before you become a missionary. If you are baptised by your, the very essence of that, you are sent out to... Uh, that all the baptised are sent out all of the time to all of the people of God and beyond, to the whole world, with all of the great gifts of the scripture and uh, our Catholic tradition, and with all the gifts and the charisms of the Holy Spirit has given us. So here we are, everybody. We're joining this together. It's called the common priesthood. This is what it's called. A priestly people. We are a common priestly people. Common in the sense of universal by virtue of our baptism. And all of us are called to these three roles, these uh, three gifts, these three offices, priest, prophet, and king. If you're interested to learn more about that, then of course you go to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and the Catechism of the Catholic Church, numbers 1267 and 1268 and beyond, 1267, 1268 speaks specifically about this, and other, other ones as well. But I'll just, for a few minutes now, just um, popularise the Catholic teaching on that in regard to the role of lay missionaries sharing Christ's priestly, prophet and kingly people. So let's have a look, first of all, at the priestly office. I mentioned it's the common priesthood. The common priesthood, universal priesthood by baptism, is uh, distinct from but not separated from the ministerial priesthood. So I share with you the common priesthood, but by virtue of my ordination in holy orders, uh, I share a ministerial expression of that as well. And um, Catholic, Catholic, Catholic Church Catechism 1267, uh, sorry, 1141 and 1143 goes on to talk about that. Uh, but as a priestly community, all of us 
share in uh, participation in Christ's priestly ministry by virtue of our vocation. I have a vocation to the priesthood through the episcopacy. You might have a vocation to married life, to single life. Uh, but we share in Christ's common priesthood, priestly. Secondly, prophetic. Priest, prophet and king. The prophetic office. Uh, all of us are called by virtue of our common baptism, common priesthood, to be a prophetic instrument of God's peace, to proclaim the kingdom of God in the world today in whatever way we can, sometimes verbally, most of the time non-verbally. So to proclaim thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So all of us are called to do that all the time, using all the gifts that God has given us. Uh, this human, this endeavour covers all human activities, all cultures, all subcultures, all wherever human beings are in society, there the inbreaking of the kingdom of God happens, and it happens particularly by our prophetic ministry. I know Jesus' youth over these years has always had a great uh, uh, love for uh, bringing out the kingdom of God in universities. Long may it continue. And that's a prophetic role you play. That, um, yes, we're going to choose this role or that role or this role to be particularly God's presence there of proclaiming his love for the world. Um, we speak the truth. We don't speak lies. We don't speak falsities. The kingdom of God in a prophetic way is always truth spoken in charity. We act in justice and in charity. Uh, and we have a particular love for the three L's, the lost, the last and the least. The kingdom of God must first be proclaimed to those that are the periphery people, as Pope Francis would call them. And um, just as they were the first to receive the good news of Jesus in the, in the gospel times, so also to us. So wherever we go, whatever area we choose, we go out particularly to those that are on the fringe. Um, priestly, prophetic, thirdly, kingly. So the kingly office, bringing for the Lord's leadership in areas, bringing the Lord's leadership in areas of governance, uh, the way we organise ourselves, the way we present ourselves to the church. Uh, the words uh, that on the secular lips are very much uh, part of what we should be looking at, honesty, accountability, uh, transparency, all these Words are virtuous words, uh, living out the gospel, the moral values of today in the way we organise ourselves in the kingly office, uh, bringing an ethical dimension uh, to our world. This is what the lay missionary does. Perhaps people like myself who received the, uh, the uh, Sacrament of Holy Orders, perhaps our main focus, not only, but our main focus is on the, on the life of the church, particularly with the sacraments, celebrating the sacraments but uh, to all of us are involved in that but we're not just there to feed ourselves lay people the lay vocation is for the sanctification of the entire world 99 percent of the catholics of the world lay people you're to focus on everything but focus particularly on the sanctification the the bringing of the holy spirit into the entire world your workplace the, the, the areas of, of, um, of the media, the areas of science, education, all these subcultures in any society, we reach out to them. So lay missionary is not centred only within the church, but also outside the church. Keep that in mind. I think a lot of people get that confused. Uh, they sort of give up on, they sort of a switch happens. And then once they've left their church or left the Jesus youth, they sometimes are indistinguishable from others in their workplaces because perhaps a lack of um, courage, a lack of um, uh, opportunity or a lack of creativity to be able to see where can I bring Christ into the world where I live, uh, whatever that might be. Um, we, we don't compete with the ministerial priesthood, we, we go together. Um, the big word uh, coming from the Vatican II Council, which is a big word, uh, even today, is co-responsibility. Uh, Jesus' youth being co-responsible. You do that already so wonderfully, the way uh, Jesus' youth, which is largely a, a lay movement of the Holy Spirit, 
this wonderful uh, impulse of grace that's happened 35 years ago and it's now spread out mainly through the diaspora of uh, people from India but beyond that now uh, this this diaspora going out the way that you're able to embrace uh, working in with the local church local diocese uh, I know from my own personal experience I first got to know about the Jesus youth because some Jesus youth people just starting in Australia they came to see me and they basically brought me into the vision of Jesus youth and animated me I could see by their faces I could see by the way they were going about things that they wanted to be a servant in the local church but at the same time represent the global Jesus youth movement so everybody will finish up at that but I, I just want you to feel by me as one of the international patrons of Jesus youth the thanks of the universal church and the encouragement of the universal church and to thank you for giving so much hope through song, through dance, through words, through active ministry. Um, and uh, the way that you can speak about Jesus is so wonderful with Jesus Youth. You know, young people, people now not so much young after 35 years, can, can just talk about Jesus as a personal Lord and Saviour, give witness to the love and the saving power of God and to be of service to the church wherever it is. So. Let's keep our international charism as Jesus youth, at the same time show a great deal of um, flexibility with the local church. Uh, let's all together through baptism, uh, and in the case of most people listening to this, the lay vocation, let's through activating our baptism as priest, prophet and king of the Lord in the world today, let us find that appropriately expressed in the way the vocation that God has given me, us, and, and, uh, and each one listening here. So we continue to pray. We still miss Archbishop Abraham, who died uh, more recent times and is, is with us in heaven celebrating uh, all, all that's happening in Jesus. We invoke, we invoke his presence with us to help us. Uh, what a great um, uh, prophet of encouragement he was for the Jesus youth throughout its, its short history and may we now move for the next 35 years with confidence with hope knowing that Jesus who has led us is leading us and will always lead us why because the Holy Spirit is the Lord and the giver of life and it's through the Trinity we come to Jesus in the companionship of Mary and all the Saints don't forget only Jesus always. God bless you. Bye-bye.